Welcome to TV and Film Focus. We're back for our third episode this week. Um, my name is Victoria Main. I'm here with our regular panelists, Francis Hyde, uh, producer, Bon Vivant, Man About Town, Keely Jellino, uh, producer and owner of Polished Perceptions here in Duluth. And our special guest today is George Reese from Minnesota Web Fest. George, thanks for being here. No, oh, thank you for having me. Thanks for making the drive up uh, in the rain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So let's start with, at the very beginning, uh, let's tell people what uh, WebFest is about, what kind of content. Uh, let's start there. Well, so I got, you know, engaged with, uh, back re-engaged with the film community about in 2015. And, uh, and I saw an opportunity in people, you know, who have been traditionally doing short films uh, to who, to actually have a chance to build an audience in a way they can't with short films by doing episodics. And I started going to film festivals dedicated to the web series and noticed that there was nothing between the coasts. So that's how I started Minnesota Web Fest, was an attempt to bring web series to the Midwest. Okay. So uh, Minnesota Web Fest has been uh, Twin Cities based yep. for... How long have you guys been? This will be year six. Year six, okay. So, and you've just, you've made the decision this year to come up to Duluth to be part of uh, the three, the the Holy Grail, the three, uh, the Holy Trinity of uh, the Duluth Superior Film Fest, mm -hmm. Minnesota Web Fest, and Catalyst Festival, cumulatively known as North Star Story Summit. Correct. So, uh, tell us, tell us about the decision process to come up to Duluth, and how that all came about. Well, so, you know, it goes back to, I think about 2018 when Philip came out here, the director of uh, Catalyst, uh, and he was wanting to move his festival, which was then called ITV. Uh, uh, um, and uh, he was the keynote speaker for that year's Minnesota Web Fest. And uh, that sort of got him interested in Minnesota. Of course, there were a whole bunch of other people involved who dragged him to Minnesota and he fell in love with Duluth. And, uh, and so he's been a, you know, obviously a big promoter of Duluth as, as, a, as a critical place for film and TV. And over the last few years, have you know, seen that grown uh, in terms of, uh, yep. of, of just across the board, all, all aspects of film and TV. And so, um, you know, um, the, he approached me last year and said, you know, our dates were always consecutive and have been since before he moved here. And he approached me last year and said, why don't we work together, you know, because, you know, we're both about independent episodic stuff. Uh, you know, his is the more traditional, you know, you know, half hour sitcoms, our, um, you know, drama type thing, whereas ours is the short form, uh, you know, 10 seconds, I'm 10 minutes per episode, you know, what they call the 10 by 10 format, uh, where the target isn't necessarily a network television, but uh, generally is going to be some sort of online streaming service. And, uh, and so we thought it was a good idea to, um, to do that and then partner with, with Duluth Superior to create really just a 10 day long event uh, around film and TV, all aspects essentially of, of the creative community and celebrate you know, what Minnesota has to offer and, and, and show it off to the world. Well, uh, we're delighted that you're gonna be uh, in Duluth this year. And yeah. are you planning to be in Duluth now going forward? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. great, that's yep. even better. Yep. Um, so, you are you are between DSFF and Catalyst. Yep. Um, can you tell folks a little bit about you know what does it cost to go? What what does yep. it cost to see the screenings? All that. So the the mission of Minnesota Web Fest is to uh, expose the world <coughs> to to Minnesota creative capabilities in the web entertainment, and to bring the world to Minnesota to see what shooting in Minnesota and creating a Minnesota is like. And to that end, uh, to, um, uh, to, to make sure that the Minnesota community is best exposed to, to, uh, to web series, attendance at our event is actually free. 
Um, if you if you if online, if you want to watch it online, you can watch all the stuff online. It's fifteen dollars for an all access pass online. But we want you we want butts in the seats for. Uh, for interacting with the filmmakers, because we have a bunch of the filmmakers here. Uh, they are pioneering a new format, and it's a great way to get to learn. It's, it's a different kind of storytelling, uh, being able to tell a very tight story in 10 minute chunks that then relates over a course of a season or two seasons or whatever. Wow. So, um... So it's free, so that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Did I mention it's free? <laughs> um, at, at Zeitgeist. At Zeitgeist, and you're at Zeitgeist. And, and remind us of the exact dates of that again. Uh, so, you're so our screenings 24? are the 26th and the 27th of September, so Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so you're the 26th of September, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so I know you, you've mentioned a little bit about the kind of content that traditionally shows at your, mm -hmm. at, at Minnesota Web Fest. Talk a little bit more about that. What kind of, you know, what are people making what are you seeing coming out of Minnesota? Yeah. And how has it changed since you started that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's brilliant. Yeah. So, um, you know, so the, the, the bread and butter of Minnesota Web Fest has always been short form episodic content. So, in other words, uh, stories in which, you know, each installment is about any, uh, they've been as short as, as, you know, two minutes long and as long as, you know, 15, 20 minutes is getting on the long end of things. Um, you know, the sort of, the thing that everybody sort of centers around is 10 minute episodes, but 10 minute episode is, is just a guideline. It's, you know, it, but the idea is that it's short form and it's episodic, so it's told over time. Um, I think one thing that's different about this year since as part of the North Star uh, story summit uh, we have decided to also bring in podcasting into the festival um, and, and focus on that aspect of web entertainment as well so we do have uh, some podcasters and filmmakers coming in uh, and it's a new experience for the podcasters uh, to actually um, you know have a festival community experience only murders in the building is going to be part of it. What's that? Is only murders in the building going to be part of it? Uh, the, the podcast series that's on Hulu. Oh no no no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay yes I, I, I've seen that yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did want to ask, are you going to talk about the business of this, how you build an audience, or is it just showing the... Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, one big crusade of mine is to convince filmmakers that they're not done with their project when uh, they've made their final cut. Um, so we actually have a special award at Minnesota Web Fest, which is Minnesota Web Fest Marketing Award, which we award to... Uh, a, 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 series that we think has done marketing themselves right. Um, we'll talk a bit, uh, we've got uh, the Upper Midwest Film Office will be uh, talking about actually producing in Minnesota. Uh, and then um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, about how you plan and launch a web series uh, uh, on whatever streaming service or ser services you're targeting. Not, not to spoil the surprise, but what would be some of the characteristics of, of somebody who's going to win this award? What, what, what would you be looking for and what, what have you seen? Uh, so, uh, you know, the big thing is, is, is finding ways to engage with an audience and build it. And, and you know, and, and uh, to be honest, the ones that are most interesting to us are the ones that leverage whatever their content is to turn it into an engaging experience with their uh, audience. I mean, obviously there's the stuff about, you know, post on social media regularly and that sort of thing, but what is it about your content that can bring in an audience in a way um, that, uh, you know, somebody who's doing a different show can't do? Uh, and, and the reason that that's so important is because, um, you know, if you want to start making money off of this, uh, this, entertainment medium, uh, you have to have a relationship with viewers. You can't rely on a streaming service to market you and get you an audience. So that sort of naturally leads me to one of the things that I'm sort of fascinated with now um, is sort of the branding and marketing side mm -hmm. of a project. So, and Keely, this is kind of in your wheelhouse. Um, so let's say you've got a story and 
the story is about, you know, the characters are kind of in a certain age group and they're dealing with a certain issue and, you know, um, I'm sort of fascinated by the intersection of um, kind of the look of stuff, the look of, of the work, and then how that ties to, in other words, oh my God, I want to wear, you know, like this character has a really unique style, right? And I want I want to buy that thing mm -hmm. that that he or she is wearing, or I want to buy that, you know, the the gizmo that they're using. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that whole branding side is sort of fascinating to me. Yeah. Um, and and part of my motivation is selfish because uh, my pilot script, which is a catalyst selection this year, yep. the Witches of Gitchigumi, mm -hmm. is about uh, postmenopausal witches. Now, you don't get a group that's more interested in buying stuff <laughs> than postmenopausal women. So, so, I mean, you know, talk a little bit about, because I assume that's part of what you're talking about. When you talk yeah. about making your content itself like sort of a driver. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, def that's a critical aspect to being able to do it, and there are two ways you approach that. One is really popular in, in Korea, which is brand-driven content, where you know the, a, a brand uh, like a Samsung will actually commission uh, a, a, a web series to be made. And, you know, they, 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 they'll, it's clear, you know, that the brand, I mean, a really good example of it, this is a web series called Lottie House, which, uh, L-O-T-T-E, um, which actually arose uh, between a co collaboration uh, between uh, some web series creators in Seoul and uh, some web series creator in Germany because Lottie is a company in Korea, but it's also the name of one of, of, of Goethe's long lost love and there's this whole mm -hmm. Backstory, no good, uh, you know, but that they decided to bring those together, and so um, while the the main title character is Goethe's Loti, it drives the brand throughout mm -hmm. the thing. Now they're not doing placement in that situation; mm -hmm. um, they're just weaving the brand as sort of a backstory. But obviously, um, web series, in particular, anything that's you know I I online has a unique ability to um, integrate, uh, you know props and things I mean and the audience is very tolerant of that I was just my wife and I right now are re-binging alias and every episode there's a shot of Ford Focus zooming <laughs> away because uh, it's such a well-known spy car um, <laughs> but, yeah. you know yeah right and, and you go, Should you laugh, you say, yeah, product placement, but then you move on and, you know, and they got their product placement. You haven't, you know, annoyed the audience with an ad and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, Keely, Keely's done some work kind of in that area doing the product placement thing. Mm -hmm. We Yes, we do do product placement. Uh -huh. And I was going to ask you, because yeah. I really know minimal about web mm -hmm. and web content yeah. is if you are only um, entertainment based or if you do work on kind of that corporate advertising side as well so yeah into your into your festival so we haven't really done any of that mm -hmm. uh, we've been more focused either on entertainment or you know we do uh, do episodic documentary series reality series um, but uh, you know, not, nothing much in, into the corporate realm. Uh, you know, on my day job side of things, one of the things I am trying to do is is build out a bit of a platform that would bring, uh, you know, brand managers into contact with, uh, you know, web series creator. I think one thing that's lacking in the world is the web series creators don't know the brand owners, and the mm -hmm. brand owners don't know the right. web series right. creators. Right. Right. And it's always business-minded versus yeah. creative and yeah. trying to kind of bridge those two together it, that can yeah. have a very beautiful yeah. relationship and um, yeah, trying to just bring those two together I think would be a really fantastic idea. Yeah, especially I mean, because the brand 
people want to get away from the same old stuff that they're doing, but right. you know, sure. but, but scaling the contacts across independent creators is really hard. And similarly, the 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 film creators <laughs> want to get on with their next project. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, but they still want to get some money, and and so there's a bit of a conflict. There. Yeah, I think it's just a, a great idea to build relationships between the creative and the business minded people mm -hmm. because. Businesses are sick of trying to put out force feeding people ads, you know, yeah, and now yes. with these new streaming platforms and whatever is available, people don't have to watch ads anymore. So oh, now absolutely. a great way to bring those brands in is that well, and subtle I think product more placement. important for the independent filmmakers managing their own distribution process, obviously, if you've got a studio right. behind you, that's a different world, but uh, it, you know, you, you, you um, you have to create a, t it goes back to that relationship, you know, with on the marketing side, building a relationship with your audience. And, and in my opinion, shoving an ad in the middle of your content is a, is not a good way to build an, exactly. a, a relationship with your audience. Right, absolutely. Um, so it strikes me now that having you here in between DSFF and Catalyst is maybe that's the, maybe that's the key to finally making that connection between the corporate side uh, and the branding side and and the creative side, so that that's definitely my hope. I mean, as we look at you know what Catalyst is doing, you know, obviously Catalyst is all about you know um, bridging the relationship between the independent creators and, and traditional television, and um, and in my opinion, one of the challenges that traditional television faces is that they've got a scalability problem. They need to create content at a, a pace that they've never had to do before and their old traditional approach to writing uh you know with the way they did handle showrunners and their writers pools is very insular and not well adapted to accepting stuff from the rest of the world mm -hmm. and the hope is is that this sort of you know, spectrum of going from Duluth Superior to Minnesota Webfest to Catalyst is going to help um, sort of create a pool that is going to help solve that scalability problem. That and yet, is it web, aren't web series one of their ultimate goals is to become a regular series? I, I uh, think <clears throat> I think any person who goes into building a web series with that objective is deluding themselves. Yes, oh, there okay. are some. Uh, you know, and that's the first thing I will tell everybody who's a, an attendee at this festival is that if your goal is to have your, you know, web series turned into a, a TV series, you're 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 taking the wrong approach. I mean, and, and Philip, I know, is of the same mind. It's it's, you know, use this opportunity to show off what you can do. Um, if your goal is to be, you know, a television creator, um, use this opportunity to show off what you can do to show that you can build an audience around your content. So it's not necessarily content. the series that becomes, but yeah. you as a filmmaker. Yeah, the, the better way I think to, to describe it is this is sort of a, 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 a minor leagues for uh, talent. And so they use their web series creations as their calling cards, and uh, then sure. eventually they get called up to the big leagues. Nice. Well, yeah, and it's, it's really the person, you know, the creator of the web fest who, you know, maybe somebody, some network executive or something sees their web series and says, you know what, this might be the guy to, or the, the gal to do this weird script yep. we got last year or whatever, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and there are a lot of good stories around that. Whereas the stories around, you know, hey, I had, uh, you know, Netflix pick up my web series, or, you know, I mean, I can name maybe all on one hand the ones that have had that, you know. So, um, but people who have, you know, turned what they've done in the web series world into something, uh, in, you know, either in feature film or in, uh, in, in, in network television, you know, or is a fairly regular uh, occurrence. Now, not that everybody wants to do that. I mean, my, seri I'm, my goal isn't actually to become a television, you know, director or anything, but I created a web series that, uh, you know, for the sake of, the short form episodic content because there are stories you can tell with this format that you can't tell in a traditional TV world. But isn't the other definition of success in this world to have a YouTube 
that has a million hits and therefore you get to sell. Yes, there is, there is definitely that. That does not typically be, you know, end up being our uh, filmmaker base because um, the ones who make money at YouTube aren't necessarily pr creating narrative content uh, so much as they are right. driving right. personalities. And products, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, that there's a huge thing on YouTube with, right. yeah, absolutely. you know, people in, like, in, Brand ambassadors. Kind of, yeah. Like you know, mm -hmm. and, and doing like uh, almost almost like reviews. Mm -hmm. So like a company will, a cosmetics company or whatever, will pay to send their stuff. They'll pay this person to go on mm -hmm. TV. Who This person who has a following, right, um, and talk about their product. You know, I tried the... Right, the you know. skincare and makeup <coughs> tutorials right. and that kind of right. stuff. Right, yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that seems, that's like a whole other thing. Yep. You know, there are 14-year-olds out there making millions of dollars. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, it's true. Yeah. Um, and I just find that wild. <laughs> so what, what, what are the other places that people stream then? Well, I, I have a streaming platform for web series called Sika TV. There's one in South America called Flixo. Um, there, I mean, th there are dozens of them. Um, they, a lot of them show up one day and go away the next, the most famous of which is Quibi. Uh, <laughs> you know, we had several billion dollars behind it. Launches in March of 2020, I think it was, <laughs> of all times. And, uh, and it turns out that, I mean, you know, they could have, paid me just a million dollars I told them their idea <laughs> wouldn't work but uh I still yeah. it, so it was guaranteed. So their idea was what and their, why 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 did you think it wouldn't work why did you know it wouldn't work their idea was that they 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 had this view that people want to consume content on their mobile devices and so they built a platform first off around A-list writers and talent creating content uh, for mobile devices, a lot of vertical content, um, and uh, and then you know, uh, two things that are wrong about that is you know I know from my own streaming platform that even with this style of content that's very amenable to being you know mobile, Roku is the bulk of our uh, sure. of our audience, so people still want to watch this stuff. Uh, on a set-top device, that they like the freedom to watch it on mobile, or, 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 but you know, so Quibi had no Roku, no set-top presence at all. Mm. They just had the mobile app, uh, and, and then the second thing is, is that uh, that I think was the fatal flaw for them uh, was uh, the idea of hiring A-list uh, talent. Uh, the cost per minute of content for doing for hiring an A-list actor and an A-list writer to create, you know, 100 minutes of content is just you know, you're better spending that money creating another game of thrones. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it just it, it you have to spend a lot of money per minute of content and that 10 minutes of content it only has so much revenue generation capability. Sure. So there's just this big mismatch between the amount of content you need to make that work. So, yeah. Um, and uh, what they were paying for the talent and what they were going to bring in. So that's kind of like an yeah. inherently flawed model. Yes. You're saying, mm -hmm. yeah. I can see that. I can see that too. Can so, you tell us a little bit about your streaming platform? Yeah. Oh yeah, so our, our uh, the, I'm playing a bit of a long game with that streaming platform. It's been around since 2017. Um, the idea behind it is actually to, to innovate ways to monetize uh, uh, any kind of uh, content, but I focused on web series to start uh, because that's an area, I mean, short films, never going to get monetized because it just, you know, you have no um, stickiness to it and uh, and the content is too short. Web series is sort of that um, nice area where, you know, people can easily get engaged or disengage. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of investment. If you spend 10 minutes watching a show and don't like it, you, you know, you can go away. So, so I started with that and the idea is to find a way other than subscriptions and, and advertising, how can we make money off streaming because there are only going to be so many Disney's and Netflix and Hulu's. How are the rest of us going to make money and be <coughs> able to do it in a way that 
I mean, not I, I don't expect to make any filmmaker rich on our platform, uh, but I do expect to get them enough money that they can continue creating content and not, uh, you know, go into huge debt. Uh, credit, you know, roll it, run it, bring up the credit card. So, are you are you going to be talking about this platform at uh, mm -hmm, during? Yes. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Are are the panels and things that are taking place at Webfest are those largely in the daytime or are there some in the those evening? Those at the daytime. Okay. Uh, you know, we in the evening we have uh, a couple of uh, networking events just to get a, a, a big part of Minnesota Webfest that I think is different from. Uh, I think is unique to the web series festival circuit versus the wider festival circuit is I think the web series world has done a really good job of building community. And so these networking events every evening are really important. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, get together in a bar type stuff. But, uh, you know, the, the web series community is fairly tight. We're part of a, a Minnesota Web Fest is part of a larger um, uh, event called the Web Series World Cup, which is an alliance of, of, of I don't know, about 20, 25 festivals worldwide. And, uh, you know, if you win an award at Minnesota Web Fest, you get uh, points towards winning the Web Series World Cup. Nice. Um, Where does that happen? So it, it, it doesn't happen anywhere. It's based on the member festivals and you're winning, you know, you're getting selected, getting nominated and winning award uh, at a member festival like Minnesota Web Fest. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, um, you know, for anybody watching this, is there anything else about Minnesota Web Fest that we need to know um, that you want to share with people? Well, I, I'd say the... I think, you know, we're, we're a very small festival. We don't, you know, get thousands of people coming in, but we've had a, an impact on uh, the web series world and, you know, Minnesota filmmaking that I think is way bigger than our individual festival itself. Um, I think we've been a big part in, in helping get build up some of the stuff that's been going on recently in film and TV in Minnesota. And, uh, you know, I mentioned the Web Series World Cup, for example, in terms of worldwide exposure. Um, Minnesota uh, series the last few years have uh, outpaced every other state except for California and New York in terms of representation um, in the Web Series world. So hmm. we, we've had a, a, a punch that's much bigger than our size. <laughs> All right. Um, so talk a little bit about, um, I, I think I sort of referenced this earlier, but talk a little bit about um, what kind of stuff are people making right now? Uh, what's coming out of Minnesota right now? What will we see at the fastest? This? Yeah. Well, so Minnesota, so I'd say the interesting about Minnesota is that we have one of the very first web series in a, a series called uh, uh, Theater People. Um, I don't know if Y'all have heard about that. They've done yeah, with it. four seasons and they've done a pilot for a fifth. Um, and they've been one of the more successful uh, web series out on the circuit. Um, uh, they're, they're a good example of a web series, you know, so they're in the 10 to 15 minute range. Um, they've varied in number of episodes each season. Um, but, you know, web series tend to like theater people um, be more on the comedy side of things than uh, the other genres. Uh, so we often have to do some fun stuff with different uh, uh, comedy categories. Um, but I think one thing that has changed, you won't see it from the Minnesota uh, uh, entries this year. The Minnesota entries this year are comedies and dramas primarily, but there's been a lot more high quality science fiction going on in mm. the web series world um, with, you know, really solid uh, visual effects and special effects uh, as, as part of the process. Obviously, you know, the budget for creating a, a sci-fi web series sure. is, 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 is a challenge. Um, but, uh, you know, people are getting really good at, at, at doing... Um, a lot with a little. Yeah, a lot with a little. Well, I'm super excited that you guys are here this year and forever now. We're never letting you go. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm no, we're super, happy to be in Duluth. Super excited to see what, you know, what this year brings and super excited to go to the festival. Oh, thank you. So thanks for being here, George. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being here. And we'll see you next time on TV and Film Focus.